over 900,000. So now we're two for two, right? We're rock and rolling. And uh, uh, at this point, we think not only are we millionaires, we think we're multi-millionaires at this point. <laughs> and we think we're the biggest developers <laughs> LA has ever seen. And uh, uh, let's see, we started doing that again and again. And then eventually, uh, you know, as, as what we, because we thought we were, you know, big time investors, the most important thing was the bottom line and how much money we're making on these deals. So I looked at my brother, I said, well, we gotta, we gotta get our real estate license because uh, every time we sell a place, we gotta pay a real estate agent. Every time we buy a place, we gotta pay a mortgage broker. So I said, well, let's, let's go out, get our real estate license, and then we'll start doing that on our own. And we can do our own deals. And so that's what I did. And how many people have the real estate license here? And working, how, on it. working on it? Working on it. All right, well, just so you know, I failed it twice. All right, it's a very easy a test, man. supposedly. Yeah, uh, not for me though. All right, I failed it twice. I don't even remember those questions were crazy. And even if I took it today, I'd probably fail it again just because the questions have nothing to do with real life. But uh, I finally passed it the third time around, and I uh, at that point decided to become a mortgage broker. Um, the reason why is because I was. I, I don't know what it was that really drove me to it, but I, I think it was just because I was always into numbers and I wanted to be the numbers guy. And so, uh, you know, I had a couple friends who were mortgage brokers and they uh, brought me into their company. And I remember sitting down at the desk at the cubicle and I'm next to like 75 other people in a cubicle. And uh, uh, I joined the certain mortgage company because somebody promised me the best leads, the boss. Like, we'll give you the best leads ever here. And you know, in sales, if you have best, the best leads, you're gonna make a lot of money. Right. And I remember sitting down and they, uh, uh, the boss comes over to my desk and he drops a phone book on my desk. And I'm like, oh, <laughs> man. Yeah, I was like, I, how many people call that a phone book? Boss? Right? It sucks. It's not easy. So, I, and I looked at him and I was like, what is this? You promised me good leads. And he looks at me, and I'll never forget this, and it's just classic sales. He goes, Josh, everybody is a lead. It doesn't matter where they come from. And so I'll never forget that, but I, you know, I started calling all the way, starting from A, you know, from 8 a.m. till 8 p.m., because I legally couldn't call anymore after that. And uh, that's how I actually learned how to sell, was getting hung up on you know, 1,000 times a day. And you know, when you cold call through, in a phone book, you learn a couple things, you learn how to, uh, uh, you learn how to have tough skin, right? Mm -hmm. And you learn how to embrace rejection and you use it to help fuel the fire inside you. And you know, every time somebody hung up on me, it made me want to sell harder, it made me learn how to, you know, get people not to hang up on me. And then it was to teach, uh, 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 taught me how to uh, get people to stay on the phone. And then it taught me how to get them to actually move forward. And so it was this whole amazing thing for what, well, I didn't see it then, but amazing for my career and how it could get, you know, how it got me to dealing with some of these high net worth individuals now that I deal with on a daily level. But uh, eventually I sold the deal alone and then I sold five loans and 10 loans and 20 loans and next thing you know, it was about eight months, I was the top guy in the mortgage business. And I didn't know in Beverly Hills and I gotta tell you, I didn't know much about it but the stuff that I did know, I knew very, very well. And I can tell you if you're a car salesman, if you're any type of salesman, you have to one, believe in your product and number two, you gotta be a master at it. And the more you know about it, the easier it is to sell. And that's even to this day with these $50 million mansions, you know, it's not just putting the house on the MLS or whatever it is and advertising it. I mean, you gotta sell the house. There's a difference of opening the door and actually just letting people walk through or actually selling a house. So like for instance, tomorrow, uh, I'm walking through a house with an owner who built the house. I scheduled two and a half hours to walk through with this owner. He is gonna tell me every little thing because you have to create value because people who don't know value in real estate, they'll walk through and say, oh, this is cool, this is cool, but they don't realize that this, uh, I don't know, this, this type of wall was imported from a certain place in the world and this is the only one and it actually is great because it keeps in the air, whatever it is. It's all part of the sales process, right? I hate realtors that just open the door and they go, yeah, let me know what you think. I'm like, really? It's crazy. <laughs> so anyways, um, you got to know your product. So uh, where was it? Oh, so eventually I ended up opening up my own mortgage company. Uh, and this was like 2006. And I got like this 10,000 square foot space. And um, 
I hired all of my best friends because now I'm making money. I returned the uh, the Jeep turned into like a Ferrari, and then you know all your friends want to do what you're doing when you have fancy stuff back in the day when you're young, and uh, uh, everything was good for about a year and a half. And I'm telling you, we were spending money like it would never stop, and we thought it was never going to stop. Like mid 2007 comes around, mm -hmm. and uh, I remember it like it was yesterday. I, one of the heads of the bank came into my office and I had this giant office and he's like, uh, Josh, we're shutting our doors. I'm like, what do you mean you're shutting our doors? You know, I looked at my fancy watch and I was like, it's two in the afternoon, what do you mean? <laughs> he's like, no, no, we're going out of business. Have you not been paying attention? And the truth was, I wasn't paying attention. I was just in my own world. I was selling the mortgages that I knew. And you know, I wasn't like watching the news or any of that type of stuff. I know that sounds super unintelligent, but <laughs> there was a certain product that I was selling and it didn't matter anything else that was going on. And uh, uh, yeah, I'll always remember that day. And you know, at first I was like, okay, not a big deal. Uh, I have you know, 10 other banks that I can send my loans to. And one by one, it was like a domino effect. The next month, another bank rep came in and they told me they were closing. And then the next month, another one. And before you knew it, it was probably realistically about five months, um, everyone was out of business. Now, I had personally guaranteed this giant 10,000 square foot office because I thought it was never gonna end. So now I got this office uh, that I can't afford. I mean, I'm telling you when my income stopped, it stopped like it hit a wall. And the part that I left out of the story is two weeks before the economy collapsed, uh, I went out and I bought a castle. And I talked about this in the book. It was so stupid now that I look back. <laughs> I bought a castle, my brother and I, we bought this castle because uh, it had two master bedrooms. And even though we were in our 20s, we still fought over who got the bigger bedroom. <laughs> yeah, real geniuses. And uh, uh, so we bought this castle in the Hollywood Hills. Now, we're in there and I remember waking up in a cold sweat in this giant like 8,000 square foot castle and uh, I'm like oh my god we're not making any money and it costs and I did all the numbers 